I thought what we would look at is the hip joint because I know a lot of you have got some hip joint issues. So I thought I'd just clarify for you how the hip works. We'll do a couple of standing movements and then what we'll do is we'll just do some exercises on the floor to help mobilize around that hip area. So this is my trusty friend Jack. He's been with me for quite a while and um, taught many workshops and training courses and, and client classes with me. So thanks Jack for assisting today. So first of all, I want you to find where your hip joint is because that's often a source of confusion. So we often point to this as the hip, but it's actually um, a part of your pelvis. So it's called your ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. So just those little bony bits. So I want you to use touch here. So we're going to use a lot of touch to sort of find these bony landmarks. Okay, so your hip joint doesn't sit there. You can see it sits right down here. So now we're going to try and find it. So you're going to slide your fingers off there until it just comes inside the hip joint and then just let your fingers slide down about two centimeters towards your pubic bone and you'll notice that there's sort of a soft indentation sort of just down there so it's in and then about two centimeters down and if you just bend your knees and sort of tip forward like you haven't got a spine you'll notice that your fingers will go a little bit deeper into your body and then the um, area over here will gently stretch as you come back up as the thigh bone moves back into space. So you can move your hip by tipping your pelvis. So if you just think of tipping the pelvis over the top of the thigh bone. So that's one action that the hip can make. Um, and that's often what we use when we're rolling down through the spine to get the last bit of the spine. It's actually your pelvis rolling over your thigh bones to get you down to the ground. Okay. So now we're just going to look at how the actual ball and socket joint works. So remember, this is very um, sort of mobile. It's really super reinforced with all kinds of muscles and ligaments and tendons and things. But it's still a ball and socket joint, so it has a lot of movement capability. All of our hip joints are a slightly different arrangement. So some of us will have more external rotation. Some of us will have sort of more um, sort of uh, uh, movement in the hip than others. So it just depends on how that thigh bone sits inside of that um, bony circle in the pelvis. Okay, but the movement happens in roughly the same way. So the movement that we use a lot is flexing to come forward into stepping. And so what happens there is that the head of, the, of your thigh bone is going to roll backwards in the hip socket in order for that leg to move forward. So I just want you to do that on the right side. So just find that little space. And I just want you to take your leg forward as if you're going to take a step. And you might notice that your fingers just sort of automatically sink deeper into your body. And then we come into extension when we stand and you'll notice that the muscles will just tone up there as the thigh bone rocks back into place. So just feel that movement back and forward underneath your fingers. And if you want to, you can even just take a step and feel how that moves. Okay. If we think about the other leg as you were stepping forward, what happens now is that the head of your thigh bone is actually going to drop forward a little bit more. So what's going to happen now is it's going to sink forward in order for your leg to go back. Okay, so it's going to sink forward in order for your leg to go back. So let's just try that. So come back onto your right hand side, find where that um, hip socket would be, and then just take your leg back. And you'll notice that you haven't got much range of motion, so you don't have to try and keep your back upright. You do also have to tip over slightly on the other leg, okay? So just let the tip happen here and let that femur, that thigh bone head come forward. Beautiful. So now we've got rolling backwards and we've got rolling forwards. Okay, roll the thigh bone backwards and roll the thigh bone forwards. Good. Now the thigh bone can also go out to the side. So we have two options when we go to the side. We can either go directly out and if you can sort of imagine that this bony bit on the side of your of your leg here is a handle and this is a jug. As you pick up the handle you're going to pour water out of the lip of the jug there. So just see if you can feel that and you can put this time you can put your fingers in to that crease. So you've got a crease just here. If you come up a little bit higher just stick your fingers in the back of the hip socket and you can put the other hand here 
you might not feel anything through the front hand but over here you'll sort of feel that dent increasing as you tip and then you'll feel it moving back out and tip and you'll move it back out okay on this leg you have to transfer your weight so you're short, sort of shifting your pelvis sideways and in some of the other classes that we did in the um, soft stability class a uh, soft stability ball class I talk about how you shift your weight so it's the same thing here so to stand on that leg you have to use these side hip muscles so that you don't slump okay so you're going to stand strong on that leg transfer your weight onto it and then just feel how that leg can tip inwards and outwards but you don't have much room to go that way you can't lift your leg very high before you have to involve your lower back to get it higher so the thigh bone's ingenious. It allows us to get a little bit more movement by rotating. So we're gonna go into what's called an external rotation. So you're gonna now not only tip, but you're also gonna twist. So you're gonna start off by twisting, and then you're gonna tip, and now your water is gonna go over that way out of your jug as you come up, okay? So I want you to feel that. So again, you can find your groove back here, find where the femur head is here, not that you're going to feel much in the front, but just remember that that's where the movement is happening. You're going to take the leg, you're going to turn it out, and immediately you'll feel these guys at the back, these muscles, really activating, yeah? So they'll kind of wrap in. So you're going to wrap those muscles in and take your leg out. That's it. You're going to wrap those guys in, take the leg out, and then unwrap it to come back. It's like opening up your Christmas presents. Opening out and coming back. Opening out and coming back beautiful all right now your leg can also wow it just keeps on coming doesn't it it can come forward and turn out so it doesn't just have to come forward in a very sort of straight direction we can actually turn it out okay so again we've got that twisting that's happening here but now instead of it tipping out towards the inside of the body it's rolling back okay so I want you to feel that. Again, you can actually put your hand back here because you'll feel that wrap happening. But now it's not going to contract. It's going to get longer at the back as your thigh bone drops back into your hip socket. So here in New Zealand, there's a game with a little um, sort of sand-filled crochet ball called hacky sack. So I always say this is our hacky sack moment where we can kick the ball. Okay, so you're just going to feel that little movement there. And then the thigh bone can also internally rotate. So now the thigh bone is going to come forward like in your extension, but it's also going to twist down, okay? So it's really rolling around in there. So just feel your thigh bone internally rotating. And what will usually happen is that the leg will come up and bend inwards, okay? Good, so just stand for a moment and just feel, we've just worked on that right side. I don't know about you, but I feel really long on that side. It feels quite delicious. All right, so let's come on to the other side and make sure that we're using this side well as well. So we're just gonna recap. We're gonna find that sort of bony protrusion on the front of the pelvis. Slide your fingers off like you're coming off a hill to the valley, and then you're gonna slide about two centimeters down, finding that hollow. Beautiful. So now we're going to hold that there. We're going to think about how the thigh bone rolls back. So it's going to tip back and down to get the leg forward. And then it's going to come back into the middle. And it's going to tip back and down and rolls forward to come and settle in the middle of the hip socket. And again. Good. Now we're going to take the leg back. So remember, we don't have much range here, so we have to tip over here a little bit as well and then come back. So the thigh bone is going to move forward towards your abdominal wall and then it's going to settle back into the middle. And we're going to move forward and we're going to come back. Good. Then we worked on tipping sideways. Okay, so this is the straight, just pouring out of the jug and then bringing it back into the middle. Now we're going to turn it out and we're going to turn it out. So you're going to tip back and down. Yeah. And if you need to, you can put your fingers into the back of the hip socket here and just feel those muscles tightening. So these guys are contracting to bring you round. If we do it coming forward, we're going to tip back and now those muscles are actually gonna lengthen as you come round. So they're actually gonna get longer to create space. 
for that bone to move into that position. And then we're going to internally rotate. So thigh bone is going to twist in, and then we're going to go down and back slightly. Okay, beautiful. And then just a couple more. Just checking your knee alignment so you don't want to let your knees come in because otherwise your thigh bone is not sitting in the middle. So when we're on two legs, we want to make sure that our thigh bone is sitting in the middle, our toes are pointing forward or our feet are nice and straight, and we're going to make sure the knee stays over the center of the ankle and you shift your hips back and then you unhinge them. Okay, so I'll do it on an angle here. Bend your knees and now shift your hips back and then come up. Okay, so this is as if you're going to go and sit down into a chair. What you don't want to do is this, because then you're sort of blocking that lovely movement of your hip and you're loading your spine. So we're going to bend the knees, we're going to shift back. Now you can push your heels down and you can use those extensor muscles to help you stand up. So those are your glutes and hamstrings. Gorgeous. All right, I hope you understand a little bit more about how that hip works. All right, so I'm just going to uh, switch position um, and then we're going to come and look at ways that we can mobilize. All right, so I'm all set up again. So um, what I'm going to use to help mobilize the hip now are some spiky balls. So this is a myofascial release. And um, I really want you to sort of um, realize that we have to release all around the pelvis before we can put any strength into that area because there's so many muscles here they get quite imbalanced so um you're going to come and lie on your back and you're going to be using these if you haven't got spiky balls um you can get sort of uh if you know about franklin method the franklin method balls will work so I'll just crawl out of shot here and just get one of these um, I just get these from one of the local sports uh, stores, so it has a little bit of give. So it's really important that whatever you use, and these spiky balls have give to them as well. So they firm, but they also have a softness. You don't want to use lacrosse balls or golf balls or anything that that's, that's that heavy, because your body can't relax into it, so you can't actually assist those muscles to release. So something about this size it's perfect for the next two exercises that we're going to be doing. So these are my, my absolute favorites. Um, and if you want the link, I can, I can put it in the, in the notes from where I get them and the names of them. So they reflex balls. So you're going to pop these into the back of your hip socket. So that was where we talked about that dent in the back where you could feel those muscles contract and release. So you, we don't want it in the butt at this point. We really want it in the back of that hip socket. So you're pretty much lying on the ground just with these balls as little placeholders under there. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to just take your knees and drop them over to the side a little bit and then just relax into the ball. Okay. And now you're just going to massage. So you're just going to wiggle a little bit. I always say we're making um, sort of a nice smooth guacamole dip. So we're going to take it from that sort of lumpy avocado into a nice sort of smooth avocado. So you have control over this. This is what I love about this exercise, is you decide how much weight you're going to put on top of those balls. Now just pause for a second when you've done that. Do that for only about 20 seconds. And then allow that knee to open to the side. And then bring it back up. And gently open to the side. And bring it back up. So we're just going to do five of these, okay? So this is just nice and relaxed. You just want to think about how that thigh bone is rolling in the hip socket. So just get this idea of really being nice and juicy and mobile in your hip socket. Good. Now you're gonna leave the knee out to the side. Imagine you've got a string between your heel and your sitting bone, and you're just going to pull the string down and then pull it back up. It's very tempting to just do this from the knee. So I want you to make sure you're going straight down so your heel is in line with your sitting bone. And we're just going to do five of those. So again, you're in control. See how many you want to do here. If you find that I have quite a lot of range in my hips so my knee is open quite a lot, you might be higher up and that's fine. And if this is too painful, if you go your full range, then by all means bring the leg up a little to go out and in, okay? Like I said, you're in control. 
So now just take the balls out because benchmarking is really important here so that your brain can understand what you've just done. So we're just going to compare those two sides and see if you can feel a difference. So see if you can put some words to that. You might have trouble putting some words to that. I'll explain to you what I'm feeling. So I feel that this hip over here has opened and dropped. My leg feels longer and more relaxed. It feels like my knees are sitting um, slightly offset from each other with the left leg I've just released a little bit lower down than the right. I also feel a little bit more space in my lower back. So you might feel that, you might not. But see if you can, as you do this, gradually build up your awareness of the changes in your body. So now we're going to come back, finding the groove at the back of the hip socket. Just gently rocking your legs over so that you can feel nice and relaxed onto that ball. And then you're going to gently wiggle. And you're just making your guacamole here. Good. If you don't like avocado, something else, but it needs to be quite smooth and silky is that image that you have in your mind. So you're just going to hold it there and now you're going to gently fold the leg over the ball and then pull the leg back up. So you're going to open the leg away from the center line and come back up. So it's like you're opening the pages of a book and you're in control of how much pressure you're putting on that ball. Okay. So, you know, you might not feel anything here. You're still doing some good. Um, but if you really tighten, your hip is really sore, then this will help to release some of that tension. You're going to leave the leg out there. And now you're going to put a string on your, on your heel and pull it along. And then gently pull it back in. So you're again in control. You want to move with slow controlled movement. Often when we get good at this or we feel like we, we're not really getting much feedback from the balls, we start speeding up and that's actually not going to help because then you're not really getting deeply into those into those fibers and into that area to invite it to release. So I encourage you to move steadily but not too fast. Okay, so that's your last one coming back up take your balls out and then just straighten your legs out again and just see how that feels. So now I'm feeling like I'm more even. I don't feel like I'm tipping off to the left there and both my knees feel like they're sort of at the same place, not one sort of offset from the other. And my hips feel nice and relaxed and open. Right, so the next thing we're going to look at is just this hip flexion movement. So this is a movement that we use a lot, but we can often get a little bit stuck. If we're sitting in chairs a lot, parts of the muscles that actually allow that flexion to happen get really short and other parts might get overstretched. So this is just a way to condition those muscles to make sure that we get a nice full range of motion. So the first thing we're going to do is lift the leg up and you're going to hug it in towards your chest and then you're going to just lift the other leg up. So what's really important here is that you've still got your placeholder balls you're going to really hug that leg into your chest so that you're tipping your whole pelvis backwards so we can really just get the hip to move, okay? You want to put your hand, your, your leg that's going to move, you want to put that hand just into your tummy and it sounds weird but you want it to be soft. So you're just going to let your leg come down and come back up, okay? So we're just working on that flexion coming up and then extension. So you're not doing the full extension, you're doing a partial extension. Good. Now, if you're feeling any clicking in your hip here, then I'd like you to stop and I want you to feel that external rotation. So that's where that thigh bone is dropping and rolling outwards. Yeah, so that takes the knee out. So your foot sort of stays where it is and you're just gonna rotate out and in. So that clicking just means that the muscles are not lying in the right place. So it's called snapping hip syndrome. So we just want to give it an opportunity to maybe release that. It means that there's imbalance around your hip. So we wanna make sure that that hip is just being set up for the best possible movement. If you find that that helps, you can just go and test. So just put your foot back down again. And hopefully now you don't have any clicking. 
But if you do still have some clicking, you might just need to micro move your leg a little bit here. So if you think of what would be the middle, you might just turn it out by a couple of millimeters. If it's still clicking, try and turn it in from the middle a couple of millimeters. So it's not huge, it's really tiny. And see if you can find a pathway through that clicking, okay? So you might have to do this a few times for that to come away. And then we're just going to pop the feet down and straighten the legs out. And again, just checking in. And I didn't think I could get any longer, but again, I'm feeling longer right through here and into my lower back. Right, let's go and do the other side. So pop your balls in. You're gonna lift your legs up. So hugging that other leg in towards your chest. And then the other leg is up. Fingers in the tummy and you're just gonna go down and up. And I just like to flex the foot a little bit because that just gives us a little bit more support through the leg as we go down and up. Allows us to sort of access more of the back of the leg. Good. So as I said, if you need to go out and in first, by all means do. Good, and now I'm gonna go out and in. And if you now need to go down and up, then you can go ahead and do that. And we're just gonna do one more like that, just swiveling out and in. Pop your feet down, take your balls out and benchmark, just becoming aware of how that's feeling. Lovely, really good. All right, so now that we've done all of that lovely release work, we just want to bring a little bit of structure in so that we can just support that release that we've just made. So um, if you want more of a challenge, you can put the balls sort of underneath your feet. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. If you don't have the balls, then you can always use your foam roller to put your feet on. Um, yeah, it'll just give you an idea of whether you're using one side of your body more than the other, because that could be why you are hurting um, in your hip, because you might be twisting your pelvis. So the balls will give you a clear indication because you'll feel more weight on one side or the other. So we're just going to do a very simple hip hinge bridge. So you're going to make sure that your spine stays aligned and you're just going to push up from the back of the leg. So those muscles that you felt wrapping when we were taking the leg out to the side, those are the same muscles that are going to help us to lift the hips up. And then we're going to release to come down. And we're going to wrap the muscles in. So you might feel your sitting bones narrowing. And then as you come down, those sitting bones are going to widen. And exhale, press both feet down nice and equally. And inhale to come down. And exhale to push up. And inhale to come down. And exhale to come up. And inhale to come down. Beautiful, all right. And then just moving those balls out the way and just comparing the two sides and seeing how that is feeling. Good. So I hope you enjoyed that introduction into the hip um, and I look forward to seeing you back in the studio again soon. Take care. Bye.